हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी जस्ट नाउ सॉ इंटर स्टरीफिकेशन एज अ वन ऑफ द वे टू डू द मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ फैट्स एंड ऑयल्स एंड आफ्टर इंटर स्टरीफिकेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द फ्रैक्शनेशन ऑफ द फैट्स एंड ऑयल सो बेसिकली वॉट इज फ्रैक्शनेशन um a principle of fractionation is very very simple and uh, unlike hydrogenation which is a chemical process of modification of fat or interesterification is a method which is a combination of physical and chemical method fractionation is exclusively a physical process of modification it is basically a process of crystallization a process of crystallization and here what we are doing is uh, like um, there are types like you have solution you have melts so fat is a melt or oil is a melt it is not a solution you must be aware that what is meant by solution a solution is like um, a solution it must have a solute and it should have a uh, solvent okay so for example uh, in case of a sugar solution sugar and water is a, you know a system it's a solution but in case of lipids or liquid oil it is not a solution it is a melt so in case of fractionation what we do uh, we separate a uh, triglyceride so basically you all know that the lipids or oils are uh, basically they are mixture of triglycerides hundreds and hundreds like depending upon the source and type of lipid we have a mixture of triglyceride and uh, and you all know that each of the triglyceride molecule has its own melting point and uh, and uh, so basically when Uh, we heat the triglyceride molecule uh, it gets melted and each one of them uh, have a different melting point and when we cool down from a high temperature to low temperature what happens a triglyceride molecule uh, starts crystallizing and uh, below the melting point and the one which uh, like a uh, has a lower melting point will crystallize uh, a uh, higher melting point will crystallize at a faster rate uh, so for example like why do we do fractionation so basically fractionation we do uh, is uh, for uh, example suppose you have a sunflower oil okay i'm just giving you an example or suppose you have a, a soya bean oil okay so so sometimes because uh, these oil a uh, while extraction and when it is not refined uh, there are other compounds also that come along during the extraction of the fat like waxes so waxes are also lipids we we have seen that you know it's a, uh, it is also a wax is also a lipid uh, and uh, because lipid is a very very broad group of compound we have waxes we have phospholipids and then fat triglyceride or triacylglycerol is one type of you know fatty acid that is present in the lipid so so when we extract the oil the waxes also gets extracted with oil and if waxes in the oil uh you know what happens the waxes have a different uh, uh, melting point uh, so when suppose you know in a, in a cold temperature country uh, suppose you have a soybean oil or a sunflower oil containing wax so what happens you know the wax will form crystal crystals and then uh, it will form a clouds or opaque cloudy structure is formed uh in the in the in the oil the liquid oil and then you will think oh what are these clouds or what are these crystal and you will think that this oil is not good for health but basically uh, 
that oil is perfectly safe to consume there is no problem at all but then uh, we think that having these type of impurities are nothing but it's a poor quality oil so we want to remove these waxes or uh, or uh, we want to uh, have a clear transparent oil and this is possible through a process obtaining a clear good quality oil is uh, can be obtained by a fractionation process in which the oil is uh, heated at a high temperature and then cooled and during the cooling uh, the triglyceride molecule having different melting points and uh, crystallizing property uh, they, they can be separated by the fractionation so so basically uh, the main objective is here to remove uh, the minor components of detrimental to the application of the oil, like ex the, as, as I gave you just example of, you know, removal of access from the sunflower oil or any oil can be one, uh, one you know, objective. Also, this process helps its separation uh, of fractions from the liquid oils like two or more fractions not necessary two uh, but there there could be more fractions of wider applications and hence uh, when you separate the fractions like unsaturated fatty acids or saturated fractions or unsaturated fractions then you have a wider application and then there is a greater value uh, than the uh, original uh, liquid oil or a liquid fat or a parent fat for example fractionation of palm kernel oil as i have already mentioned the palm kernel oil has 50 percent saturated fatty acids uh, and also uh, a liquid like unsaturated fatty acid like palm oil to liquid that is olein and palm oil to starlit that is stearine fractions could be uh, separated and olein has different uh, applications uh, while uh, stearine has different applications the third objective is uh, also it helps in enrichment of desirable triglycerides like uh, pop in palm oil uh, and also as an alternative to hydrogenation like we have seen in the hydrogenation trans fatty acids may form and it is uh, deleterious or hazardous to the health and in that case uh, it can be an alternative to hydrogenation example fractionation of palm oil to yield fractions that can replace the hydrogenated soybean oil in, in margarine okay so so as we just now sir <coughs> oils and fats contain a mixture of triglycerides hundreds of triglycerides depending upon type of fat or type of oil so these mixtures of triglycerides of varying uh, and they have a different uh, melting points, differences in solubility, each one of them are quite uh, different. And if cooled carefully, the more saturated, higher melting triglycerides, they will solidify. Then you remove those solidified first and then, you know, oil can be fractionated uh, and it can be, you know, fractionally crystallized to produce a solid mass that is stearine and a liquid fraction that is olein. So there are basically three methods to do this fractionation. Number one is dry fractionation and number two is detergent fractionation and solvent fractionation. So, so fractionation is uh, done to improve the functionality as as you know that when you separate a uh, stearine and olein stearine which is a solid and olein which is liquid so when you fractionate them uh, you can work out individually of them and improve the functionality and improve the commercial value to produce the special products and a very good example is you know the fractionated palm oil uh, which is you know uh, commercially done and uh, uh, palm oil as such is uh, not uh, a very expensive it is a very cheap source but when you separate the fractions uh, of stearine and olein from palm oil and then you further process this fraction into speciality fats which could be then further used in bakery and confectionery product there is a huge value addition 
So palm oil is especially suitable for this technique because of its composition that is to almost equal parts like 50% is saturated and 50% is unsaturated fatty acids and then more importantly higher and lower melting gradients that both of these fractions have different you know melting uh, points. So to produce special products such as cocoa butter substitutes Fractionation offers a very, very good option like possibility of obtaining triglycerides of different melting ranges and that could be then further exploited or uh, could be used uh, for exhibiting a melting behavior which is which could be you know uh, which can result into a formulation of a mixture or a blend of product which is similar to that of a coca butter okay so fractionation is also performed on animal fats like large. A fractionation of lard is very, very popular. After a slight interesterification, we have just now seen the interesterification. Interesterifications or shortenings can be obtained uh, 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 that differ very much from the crude material, and the same holds true for beef sallow. The olein can use as a soft fraction. So fractionation can be done with a crude oil, or you can either take a refined oil or it can also be done with the neutralized and bleached oil or bleached oils. Okay, so olines and stearines that are obtained using fractionation retain the same untreated or pre-treated status as the fats that have been used for fractionation. This means if, if crude oils are fractionated, if crude oils are fractionated, the the redefining steps have to be performed separately at a later time on both olein and stearine fractions so basically a fractionation process is basically a very very simple physical process which consists of a controlled cooling of the oil thereby you include uh, the you induce the partial of fractional crystallizations as i mentioned before like you you know that a specific oil or uh, suppose you want to fractionate canola oil or corn oil or flaxseed oil or for example fish oil or a palm oil so so you you heat the oil so that the triglyceride in the oil, oil are melted and then when you cool uh, these uh, triglycerides that are present, you induce partial or fractional crystallization. So the remaining liquid is then separated. Like uh, the compounds which have a higher melting point, what will happen? They will get crystallized first. And then the, the fractions that have a lower melting point like unsaturated fatty acids like olein fraction that will remain liquid and then it is very easy for us to to separate by a mean of filtration or you just centrifuge and separate the crystal and the uh, liquid portion so if oil is cooled to a certain uh, temperature the high melting triglycerides like stirring will crystallize first while the low melting ones will remain liquid okay so the stirring can then be separated from oil that is olein by different methods the fat or oil is thus then divided into two fractions stirring with a high melting point whereas olein with a uh, with a low cloud and melting points and this is technique is called as a fractional crystallization and it is used to obtain oils or fats for suitable applications like as a cooking oils having a higher stability or for making the margarines or shortening production that could be used in the various bakery products okay so basically the fractionation process is split into uh, four basic steps like you first melt or you dissolve the entire uh, either hard fat or liquid fat or liquid oil and then you perform the conditioning and uh, you lower the temperature and allow the fat, fat that are molten uh, to crystallize and then you filter or you centrifuge and perform the separation of two fractions only from the stirring. The number of fractionation states are steps are determined, the width of the melting ranges that are obtained in the separated fraction. And this also allows the separation of triglyceride classes from each other. 
if if palm oil is fractionated like in one stage a stearine is obtained that is composed of uh, gs3 and uh, gs2 unsaturated like saturated unsaturated uh, in which s means saturated and u means unsaturated okay so these two fractions to be obtained um, uh, so there are three methods through which the fractionation could be carried out like it is a dry fractionation it's a batch process through batch crystallization of oil without using additives uh, by just uh, uh, controlled cooling and uh, uh, continuous filtration so it's a dry fractionation you don't use any additives in this process uh, in case of second method or base uh, solvent fractionation, it's a continuous crystallization of the oil in a solvent followed by a separation of the liquid and solid fraction through a continuous uh, drum filter. So solvent fractionation basically involves use of hexane or acetone. Acetone, uh, you all know that the hexane and acetone uh, can dissolve or fat is soluble in these solvents. So these uh, hexane and acetone allows the uh, dissolution of uh, fats and uh, let the high melting components crystallize in a very low viscous organic solvent. So these, uh, these solvents are low viscous organic solvents. So this can be also helpful with respect to the selectivity of the reaction, but mainly it offers advantages in the field of phase separation. Much purer solid fractions can be obtained first, even with the, uh, in case, uh, sometimes, you know, vacuum filtration can also be used, but being a more expensive process, it is less commonly uh, used. Uh, dry fractionation is one of the most commonly uh, used because it is, uh, Although it is a batch process, it is a very cost effective, okay? So it, it comes only into the picture when a very high added value of at least one of the resulting fractions makes up for a high cost. Then only uh, this solvent fractionation process is used, otherwise dry fractionation, which doesn't involve use of any chemicals or additives. Uh, the, the third way of doing fractionation is a detergent fractionation through batch or a continuous crystallization of the oil uh, by controlled cooling and separation of fractions either by centrifugation process or by gravity uh, after adding a sufficient amount of surfactant is called as a detergent fractionation process. So just to give you an overview of uh, winterization so basically winterization is a thermomechanical separation process where component triglycerides of fats and oils are crystallized from a melt the two component fractional crystallization is accomplished with the partial solidification and separation of the higher melting triglyceride components and in this process so basically fat is melted heated to eliminate any crystal formed and then the molten fat is cooled down under controlled agitation and cooling conditions to produce crystals, uh, crystal nuclei formed by the higher melting triglyceride and the nuclei will grow to form crystals of the desired size. So there are various factors that affect on the crystal formation, like uh, impurities that are present in the oil. For example, in, in, in along with the oil, if you have a lot of pigments or waxes or phospholipids or some other foreign particles, the rate of the crystal formation is going to decrease. The agitation, uh, the amount of agitation used, the temperature that is being used, the triglyceride composition itself, the type of pretreatment followed by the fat, like whether it is bleaching is carried out or whether it is refining carried out and any process. So basically fat crystallization is carried out in, uh, happens in three steps, nucleation process, solvent fractionation and crystal growth. So nucleation, in the nucleation, the rate of nucleation depends on the triglyceride composition of the oil being winterized, the cooling rate of the oil, the temperature of the nucleation and the mechanical power input or agitation. Uh, yeah, solvent fractionation, I have already explained what is it. Crystal growth rate is dependent on crystallization temperature, time and mechanical energy.